But look out. Here comes Bonsignor. Welcome to the JDV Productions Podcast. Oh, roll, Trouble but... here on the front stretch. One car hard in the outside wall. Interviews with the biggest stars. And I, I, I can't give it up enough to this team, uh, but especially Tommy Baldwin, man. I've had a lot of fun with him over the years, and it's just getting better. Go behind the scenes. In-depth storytelling. Catch up on all things JDV. Yeah, there are JDV Productions and Josh Mineta. Uh, the JDV Productions Podcast. Your champion starts now. Welcome to episode number 14 of the JDV Productions Podcast. My name's Josh Veneta, and I'm the founder and president of JDV Productions. Today, my guest is the 350 Super Modified Champion from the second annual Granite State Derby, Jeffrey Battle. Jeffrey, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. You bet. Uh, We're glad to have you on. So the 350 super finish at the Granite State Derby was the most thrilling finish of the afternoon by far. You passed uh, Eddie Wickham as the white flag was unfurled, and you led the only lap that counted, which was the last one. Uh, You can watch the replay on Flow Racing for those of you who haven't seen it. Walk us through just the you were very patient throughout the race and you methodically worked your way through the field. You were on Eddie's back bumper for a bit before you finally made the move and you passed him on the outside. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Lee's uh, one of those tracks where I think the asphalt is obviously a lot older and grainy. Um, I knew that I didn't really think we'd have too many yellows. So I knew that um, not having too many yellows, you had to keep the tires underneath us. Um, And when I say that, I mean, try not to be burning them up, slipping and sliding around any more than you have to. So I I think as the run went on, I made sure just to stay consistent. And it seemed as as if almost a lot of those guys were starting to actually get quite loose um, because of whatever reasons. And as the run went on, it seemed that we just almost stayed consistent enough to catch up to them. I don't really know if they almost slowed down after looking at the lap times. I think we actually just stayed consistent enough to stay with them and actually catch catch up to them um especially in that long green flag run um i've i've watched a lot of guys including my uncle eddie in the 39 car at lee over the years and i've I've, i know how tough it is as far as loose goes because of um the tires wearing down because of the asphalt so obviously a little bit of experience mentally i think helped but um, I've learned a lot from my, my family, including my uncle in the 39 car there. So, and just to tease it all the way out for people who may not be as familiar with super modified racing, uh, when he keeps saying uncle Eddie in the 39, that's actually who he passed on the last lap of the race, uh, mm-hmm. to win, uh, one of the very best in 350 super co- uh, competition. And I learned this uh, going into the race. He actually, um, is the track record holder at Lee for single car qualifying there. Oh, uncle Eddie. He, yeah, I don't know if it held up during uh, during our event, but yeah, it, it was. I think I think it did hold up. So yeah, she's a, yeah. she's a record holder from the 350 Supers. So really cool as a family. So your uncle, who you beat, was simultaneously the one who actually taught you how to beat him. Yeah, he's. Um, I, I learned. I'm very fortunate enough to grow up with all my uncles, but he he's taught me a lot over the years. Obviously, he he's drove a lot more um, than my other uncle, Rich. My I unfortunately lost an uncle and. Pennsylvania back in 99 uh, my uncle Randy <clears throat> at Jennerstown Speedway um, but my uncle Eddie after <clears throat> after that he seemed to be the only uncle that kept racing and obviously he's got a lot of experience he sure does so it sounds like it's been a little bit of a family affair uh, for you and we normally have a lot of the drivers from modified competition you're our, our first non-modified guest so talk a little bit about your own history and how you got started in racing for those who may not know you yet yeah I um honestly growing up I really I didn't really have many friends I still don't have too many friends I I lived with my grandfather and he was very fortunate enough to bring me to the race shop growing up every day during the summer um every Friday at Lee and when my uncle Eddie started running big blocks supers um in the 21 car for Pam and Lee Vinyl, I, I was very fortunate enough to start doing a lot of the traveling with him through my grandfather because he allowed me to go with him to watch my Uncle Eddie. And eventually, when I, as I got older, um, I turned about like 16, 16 or so, and 
I never really had the desire to drive, to be honest with you. And I kind of, <clears throat> my love for the sport started off and still is the love of the sport and dedication for the mechanics end of it. I love driving, but I really enjoy the mechanics end of it. And I, when I turned about 16, I kind of started to gain confidence that, you know, maybe I could drive a car after learning how other people seem to, I, I struggle and I've, I've learned why they struggled. And I, I eventually gained confidence. And I actually started asking my grandfather, like, Hey, you know, what if next year we just don't buy tires and we just go out and we'll, we'll try to um, just go have some fun. And obviously he didn't really want to get me involved in the racing for, a, <clears throat> I guess, for good reasons. He didn't really want to see me get hurt and mm. he didn't really know um, what the future would hold by having me start racing. And he didn't really want to go through a driving school of having me drive a car with no experience and I have a cousin, James, who actually has, or he had two Pontiac Grand Prix, uh, the 2.6 liter cars <clears throat> that they actually call an Ironman car and a front wheel drive. So when I was 16, I, I kind of got told, I kind of realized that I'm never going to be able to race for my grandfather. So I started <clears throat> bugging, bugging my cousin, James to rent a car off of him and I rented a car off of him. I actually borrowed a truck and I borrowed a trailer and I started bringing the Ironman car to Lee. And I did about <clears throat> four races in that. And I was fortunate enough to win one, um, two seconds. And then I think like a fifth and a, um, well, actually maybe five races. And one of the races ended up being pretty rough. I think we got put in the wall, but come that following year, <clears throat> um, I actually raced, a, I didn't race, I tested a midget um, for Locke there. I don't know if you guys know the Locke family. I, I tried out one of their midgets at Star, and my uncle Rich, who is my grandfather's boy, he must have saw my love and dedication for the sport. And after I tested out that midget, he thought it would be a good idea to buy a chassis and he did. And me and him put the car together, um, over that fall and winter. And I actually kind of had to step back from help my grandfather out, which inside, I really wasn't a big fan. I, <clears throat> I'll never forget how much he taught me and got me into the sport, but I actually kind of left helping out my grandfather and uncle Bob to go run with my uncle. And we actually started competing against them and it ended up, it ended up turning out quite well we our first year racing with them we were racing against them with my uncle we won three races and we actually won the star classic which they were running they led a lot of the race and we had a good battle at the end and um their wing broke and we ended up winning the race but that was very very um it meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to my family um to see how that unfolded regard I mean I felt bad for my grandfather I know how much he wanted to win that race having it be in honor of my uncle Randy it was the Randy Whitcomb memorial race and it was very very touching to see how it all unfolded especially looking back at how this deal transpired with my uncle after wanting to race for my grandfather um but it's all it's all good I, I'm I'm very happy everything panned out the way it did and I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, I got to thank my uncle Richard a lot though, for rolling the dice and wanting to give me an opportunity. We, we, we started off with, we actually planned on skipping the first race ever because we didn't want the commitment and we've, we ended up doing well and never wrecked the car and just kept going with it. And here we are. Wow. What a great story. Like so many who have been on the podcast, it's really a family affair. And I'm so sorry to hear about your uncle um, who passed away at Jennerstown. That's, that's horrible. Um, yeah, I, I was, I'm actually 22. So I was born in 2001 and I, I never got to meet him, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they, they've changed, they changed that track a lot since I think right after that accident, they actually might have closed down the track afterwards for a couple of years. But if you actually, you can still kind of see when the wheel and tour runs there, 
when you're looking at that turn one, you can see where they created that wall that goes towards turns two. And that wall used to never be there. It was actually a big opening in the wall to allow the cars to enter the track. And unfortunately, that had bit him. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about from when I was there, when we did our races out there. So um, you get into 350 Supers, um, which I think are uh, really badass. I mean, you know, I look at, I don't get an opportunity to look at them too much. That race at Lee was the first time we've ever had the 350 Supers on the card for JDV. I had seen them before um, at Thompson. Uh, narrow cars, huge tires, ridiculous horsepower. What's it like? They look like a handful. I mean, what's it like to drive? Yeah, I actually, I drove a, a Tiger Sprint back when I was like eight, nine years old and told my, my parents <clears throat> split up or whatever. And I ended up not stop racing. And when I started driving the Supers, the 350, I was told that it's like a big go-kart because of like the momentum um, that you need with those in a way. But honestly, after driving one, this, this is my sixth year racing the speed comes to you. Um, but I honestly find because of that wing, it's, they're very stable, a lot more than you'd think. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to try out a modified this year. And after trying that modified out, you really realize how stable the cars are, the supers with that top wing on there. And with that, <clears throat> the, the supers are 65% left side weight. So obviously when you go into the corner, that car, it just cuts into the corner tremendously. Um, a lot more than I would think any modified pro stock street stock, any other car out there where the motors are centered in the car. Um, when you're actually looking at that, the super modified, I mean, I might, I might be off a little bit when I say this, but when you're looking at the car, that right side frame rail <clears throat> is pretty much damn near the center of the race car. Um, like I said, I might, I might be a little bit off, but that's how much they're offset. I mean, even the rear end is it's on the left side with just a little spline off the left rear for the, the hub. Um, but they're a lot more stable than I would think than most people think. And that's, uh, you're attributing a lot of that to the downforce created by the wing. Correct. Yeah. Um, yep. they obviously can be a handful if your wing is off. Um, when I say off, like the, where you have it mounted and the air in it, um, that your wing angle, um, yeah, a lot of guys will run it on the roll cage versus the rear end. And we actually run it on the roll on the, I'm sorry, we run our wing on the rear end, which seems to be a lot more of like an old school traditional setup where a lot of guys nowadays are running it on the roll cage where it does make the car act a lot more stable, but we think, in our heads that you're giving up that traction when you mount it right to the rear end. Cool. Really yeah. interesting. So yeah. we know you want it, Lee. Uh, how's the rest of your 2023 20, season going? It's going pretty good. We've um, we've won at Lee. We were fortunate enough to win up at Star. Um, we're actually going out to Oswego this weekend. We're going to run out there. Um, this, this year was we have about, I think, like 19 races planned out. So we should have a pretty good amount of racing to do. We've, we've, we've won two. So we're off to a pretty good start. No, no DNFs yet. So that's a, that's a plus. And that always helps. So heading out to Oswego, great racetrack. Talk about um, rich and super modified tradition. We, we brought a modified tour race out there uh, in 2021. Uh, it had a blast. I mean, so cool to be on top of the tower and look out to your right over turn one and there's Lake Ontario. Um, just a really, really cool view and great community and a, a wicked race town. Um, what do you compare that track to? Do you think that tracks at like any other track you've raced before at Oswego? I've, I've actually, I've tried out a big block super down at Thompson. Um, and Thompson obviously is very quick with the banking, but I think in a way Oswego, I like the characteristics as far as how much of a circle it is. It, it's a lot, it's, it's very racy. I find because however you come out of the corner, obviously it affects you tremendously down the straightaways, but where you're, the straightaways are not so straight, obviously, whatever you're, however you come off the corner, it, it drastically affects you down the straightaways. So it's one of those tracks where you got to be hand, handling pretty good. And obviously 
be right on um, as a driver hitting your marks. Um, but that's one of our faster tracks that we go to. It's actually, I think, the fastest track we go to in the 350s. I want to say they are, they're averaging about like 100 and almost like 125, 130 miles an hour. Um, but I, I love that track because of how much you can, I find you can get away, you can, as a driver, you can get away with making mistakes more compared to a track like Star or Lee where it's smaller um, as far as like overdriving the car goes. But at the same time, you got to be careful because a track like Oswego, you can't really afford to spin out when you're going so quick. It'll, it'll mm. bite you. Yeah, it will. So you mentioned earlier already that you made your debut in a Nastra modified. Uh, your first race actually was a JDV productions event at Monadnock Speedway um, for the duel with the dog. You came out of there seventh in the beautifully prepared number 19 car for Bobby Weber racing. I mean, stunning modified. Um Talk a little bit about what did you think of the mod? I uh, I really really enjoyed it. I like the I like the again I love the mechanics end of it. So I love learning the how different the modified of the super is. Um, it's obviously a big learning challenge for me on and off the track. But I actually really like the long r- long races. I enjoy the strategy that's involved and the tire strategy. Um, a lot different to drive for sure compared to the super. So I'm, I'm enjoying learning how difficult that is for me in a way. Um, I feel, I feel like I'm adapting quite well, especially racing. I, I think racing, I learn a lot more compared to practice. So hopefully the more we race, the more experience I'll get and the more comfortable I'll get with it. Yeah. And I know you've got a few more races that are going to be coming up, um, in that car. So talk about you, you talked a little bit about this earlier, particularly with the stability and the downforce, but what are the other biggest differences you're noticing between the 350 and the traditional modified? Um, so like the, the 350, that weighs 1950, uh, with me in it and the modified that weighs, I believe 20, I think the rule is 2,600. Yeah, it is 2,600 for those cars. That's right. Yeah. So with that said, that extra 700, call it 700 or 650 pounds um that may not seem like a lot but if you look at the size of the calipers and the rotors on the modified compared to the super i mean the super a lot of guys they only run they actually run single piston calipers where the modified obviously you got big heavy duty brakes and rotors on it and i find that i find the braking in the braking um deacceleration on the modified to be obviously a lot more significant compared to the super where the super you almost don't even use brakes as much because that that top wing actually acts as like a parachute in my opinion when you go into the corner that that it pushes up in the air and it's it naturally slows the car down where the modified you have to pretty much do it on your own based off a setup and, and braking the car on your own with the brake pedal um so as a driver I find you obviously got to be able to make sure you're very smooth with the brakes and um, obviously got a lot, a lot of, a lot of learning to do as far as braking goes. I, I find with the modified compared to the super. Interesting. And so you're finding you're keeping a lot, it's a, a lot easier to maintain momentum in the super, which kind of naturally happens with the downforce and everything compared to the modified. Correct. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Anything else? Um, Not really, honestly. I, uh, I'm excited to try out the modified again. We're actually going to race in a couple of weeks at star with it. Um, I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, I'm excited to hopefully see it running another JDV productions race. One of these races, even if it's not a super race or modified, hopefully it's one of the, one of the two, but um, you guys put on a really good show at both the, both times that I've attended one of your shows. I oh, really appreciate that. Thanks so much. You're really kind. I'm sure we'll see you again. I think you guys are, I'd imagine you guys are planning to be at the uh, super race at the, um, in, in the fall at Claremont. Oh yes. I, yep. I didn't even, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize that's a JDV race, but, uh, yeah, we are planning on that and uh, looking forward to that. Cool. It'd be fun. So it sounds like it's a family affair. You've got a lot of support out there. People who have both given you opportunities and helped you get going, um, and continue to, um, keep you moving. Uh, who do you want to thank? I got to thank, honestly, um, I got to start off by thanking my grandfather and uncle Richard without my grandfather, 
let getting me involved. I don't think I would have ever, anybody would have <clears throat> gave me the opportunity. And I'm a, I'm a big believer that a lot of these drivers, in my opinion, yes, there are a lot of drivers, but in my opinion, a lot of these drivers should, they're not really earned rides nowadays. A lot of them are bought rides. It's who, you know, um, it's not really so much of like an earned earned rides deal game anymore. I, I find, I feel like, so I, I think it like my uncle Richard, he really rolled the dice with me. I mean, spending the money and the time and effort to get the super deal going on. I could have went out my first race and backed it in the wall race after race. And it's, it was, a, it was kind of a big nut for him to crack. <clears throat> so I, I think, I, I think, um, my uncle Richard by him rolling the dice doing that for me. I could never thank him enough for that. And uh, I really, obviously my love and dedication for the sport, I think put me in that, this position, but again, without him, I could never, never do it. I have to say, I find that, you know, your first, there's so many people who think about getting behind the wheel and going out and doing battle. The fact that you were kind of a reluctant driver, if I can use that term, uh, you know, primarily looking and saying, you know, my heart really goes out to the crew members and the mechanics who are preparing and working on these things and pitting them during the races. I think that is, I think that's really fascinating. And I think it's cool that even though now you're a driver, you still keep that passion and appreciation for them and you haven't fully owned, taken off your own, you know, crew member hat yet. Oh yeah. I, um, I, there's no I in team. I'll never forget that. And I, uh, it's without, without the crew guys and obviously the fans and everybody, but the whole, the whole, the whole deal that makes it happen. It's not just the drivers. I mean, you need, you need the whole team, the support behind you. And for me, a lot of it's family, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but for the guys that don't have family, obviously I, I really notice the guys who take the time and thank all of their crew members sincerely um that eric <clears throat> that that race down at stafford this weekend with um that eric goodale when he won it i loved i love hearing speeches like him when uh he, he's very appreciative and thankful to be where he's at um i don't i'll never forget where i started off and came from yeah it was uh he gave all the credit to his crew i think that groundedness is going to take you really far i think there's a really bright future ahead of you um and I'm, we're looking forward to watching it so for people who do want to watch your future and what uh and what's in the what's going on with you and your racing career um where can they follow along to stay up to date with you guys yeah i'm i'm honestly on facebook a little bit but honestly not too much um i know if you're if you really want to follow us if you follow star and oswego um, I know even the JDV race coming on up, we'll be, we'll, you'll be able to follow us there. Unfortunately, we, we used to run the smack tour and we, I would say you could follow us there, but for reasons that they don't want to share with, with me, they actually have banned me from running there. And it, it's really upsetting to me and my family in a way, um, to not have a discussion over it <clears throat> with, with those guys over there. But I, I would say you could follow me there, but unfortunately not no more. Got it. So they can keep up to date with you at Star and Oswego and keep your eyes on the jdvproductions.com as well as all of the JDV Productions social media channels so you can find out uh, what Jeff Vries' next JDV event will be. Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on your championship at the Derby. We'll look forward to seeing you later this season. Thank you there, Josh. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.